Okay, so let's start talking about cardiovascular disease. So in your book, I want you to go to page 320, and let's um, just look at some basic definitions first, okay? So if you um, look at the definition on the left of cardiovascular disease, this is any disease involving the heart and or blood vessels. So if you go to figure 14.2, which is that pie chart in the upper right, I'm going to give you a second. I want you to take a look at it, okay? All right. So with this pie chart, what you should see is this is titled The Percentage of Deaths from Types of Cardiovascular Disease in the United States in 2013. So the first thing you should notice from this part, pie chart is that cardiovascular disease is made up of different types of diseases. So that green part on the right, which is 47.7%, that is a type of cardiovascular disease called coronary heart disease. And we'll talk about what that is, all right? And then on the left side, you can see a variety of other types of cardiovascular disease. So stroke is a type of cardiovascular disease, all right? And the percentages of death from stroke are six, about 16.4%. The heart Failure is 7.4%. Hypertension-related diseases, 8.3%. Diseases of the artery, 3.3%. And then there's an other category. So number one thing I want you to know is that cardiovascular disease represents many different types of diseases involving the heart and or the blood vessels, okay? All right. So at the bottom left of that same page on figure 14.1, what I want you to notice is that over time, those lines are going down. So the x-axis is time from 1979 to 2011. The y-axis is um, deaths in thousands of people, all right? And for both males and females, you'll see since about 2000, we are really trending down. So what that will tell you is that people are living longer with the disease. So we've really got to help people manage their lifestyles and because they're living a long time with these diseases. So um, it said on this page that an estimated 85.6 million Americans live with cardiovascular disease, half are under the age of 60. So even though the death rate has gone down, we still have an awful lot of people living with this disease. All right, you may hear something in the background. I'm cooking my son's son some lunch. So give me one sec to stir it. Okay, so I'm back. So just um, real quick, I want you to spend more time reading this than me talking about it. With the cardiovascular system itself and the heart's anatomy on page 321. Um, so in terms of the heart, think about it as this. It is a pump. It's in the left side of your chest. It's about the size of your fist. And its job is to pump and with every... Um, time that it beats is to literally push blood out of it so that that blood, which has oxygen in it, can go throughout your entire body from head to toe to the trillions of blood vessels to bring oxygen to the body. Your cells cannot live very long without oxygen, okay? That's why people die when they stop breathing, okay? So your heart has to pump. And in those of us who have a healthy heart, it's going to pump, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 times a minute. And so with every pump, every single one, blood's pushing out. And so in this picture, you can find the aorta and um, what we're not, like I said, we're not going into the nitty gritty of this. That's anatomy and physiology. But... I want you to know that blood goes out of your heart from your left ventricle into the aorta, which is the largest blood vessel in your body, it's kind of right down the middle of your chest, okay? And then it just branches and keeps branching so that it goes to all kinds of different organs, okay? 
Now, where does the oxygenated blood come from that gets to the heart? It comes from the lungs and something called the pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary is lung, and so when you breathe in, you bring oxygen into your lungs, and that oxygen, through a very microscopic process, gets pulled in through these little structures. They're kind of like grape-like shaped structures called alveoli in the lungs. And literally, oxygen goes into your bloodstream, and carbon dioxide, which is a waste product, goes back into the lungs. And every time you exhale, that waste comes out. So when you go, or just exhale normally, you've got some waste in that air, okay? But you breathe in, that oxygen goes into the pulmonary circulation, makes its way to the heart, and then out of the heart so that it can be circulated in the body, okay? All righty. So let's talk about where some of these diseases can happen and what are the names of them. So if you go to page 322, what you're going to see is the first disease we want to talk about is called atherosclerosis, okay? And I want you to look at um, figure 14.4 because this is a hard concept for some people to get. So notice that on the outside of the heart, you see there they have pictures of what are called the coronary arteries. So the coronary arteries are actually the arteries that bring blood to the heart, to the, to the cells of the heart, so that they can do their job of pumping. So remember how I said that the left ventricle pumps blood out the aorta? So the, that was kind of weird, sorry so that the entire body can get um, oxygen. Well, part of that entire body is so the heart itself through these coronary arteries can get oxygen, okay? So atherosclerosis, as this picture has, is when you start to get these plaques that build up, and these plaques happen when the blood vessel lining is damaged, and they build up, and eventually if they get so thick, it's really hard for blood to get through. Um, and if they completely clog an artery, like think of it this way, if that's the blood vessel, if the plaque fills it up, no blood's getting there, okay? And if that happens to be a coronary artery, you're gonna have a heart attack. So on the next video, we'll talk about that.